Here's the ABCs of facing down your giants. A is be of good courage. Be of good courage. Here's uh, my habit in this. Once I know God is being very specific with words, I find myself going back to the original language. I want to know exactly when he said something, what exactly did you mean by that word? And in the original, when he said good courage, the word in the, the original Hebrew was amatz. And it means to be steadfastly minded, to fortify, to increase, or to strengthen. Now, I did some research since we said part of this comes into bullies. And, and you know, the whole idea of bullying in schools now has kind of been a, a, on the forefront for now getting on quite a few years. So there's all kinds of articles out there on how to deal with bullies. And it's kind of an amazing thing. As I looked through a number of articles, it all seemed they all started off the same way. And dealing with bullies was to stand up to them with confidence. To stand up with confidence. At some point, if you're dealing with some kind, something that is bullying you, and of course that's a metaphor, it may be a person, but it may be some situation. But at some point, at some point, if you are going to face it, if you're going to win over that bully, you're going to have to face it. You're going to have to face it down. Now here's the thing. How are you going to face it down? How are you going to remain steadfast? Where does the power for that come? How are you going to be strengthened or fortified? Well, if we are children of God, our main strength is going to be God. If you are five foot two, a uh, little Hebrew guy on this big six foot six giant guy, you and yourself are not going to win that battle. And it's going to have to be something more than just you. And God says it will be. It will be. I will fortify. And uh, you will have to stand up. But I will fortify. The second one sounds almost redundant. Well, it says be of good courage. And then the second, or the B is, don't be afraid or dismayed. Well, they sound kind of the same. Well, the first one's on the positive side. This is what you need to be. The second one is you need to avoid this. So, afraid or dismayed. What is being said here? The, the, the original word of rots in the Hebrew uh, meant, among other things, oppressed. Dismayed was the word new, and it meant to refuse or forbid or to neutralize, to disallow, to make of no effect. And that's exactly what that first generation of Hebrews did. They didn't even meet the giants. If you remember the story the first time around, they didn't even meet the giants. Twelve spies go in, but the, the, the population, they never even saw them. And, and they were oppressed. They were relegated to the wilderness on, on an obstacle that, that they never even saw. They were oppressed by them. And, and the Hebrew people refused to believe God. They uh, disallowed the promise that was given to them. And even though they had a relationship with the God of the universe, it came to no effect. Even though they, they knew the God of the universe, that relationship came to no effect because they were... Um, dismayed and afraid. It, it killed everything. Now here's a tragedy that would actually be funny if it wasn't for the price that was paid for it. Uh, Forty years they disappear back off in the desert wandering around. All those people die in the desert. And then uh, the new generation comes and they send spies into the land. And they uh, come across uh, one lady we have a room with. There's a couple of guys up there We've heard her name, Rahab. This harlot who's up in the, uh, uh, and, and she's hiding them in, in her area and, and striking a deal with them. But what's interesting is why she's striking this deal with them. In Joshua 2 9, she says to them, I know that the Lord, and I love that she doesn't say your Lord, she says the Lord, acknowledging the one true God, has given you this land. And the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of our land, of the giants, are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. Bottom line, these people were scared of them for an entire 
generation. The Red Sea, that happens in the generation before. So as the Hebrew people were shaking in their boots over the giants, the giants were shaking in their boots over the God who kept the Hebrew people. So often, that's what we find in with our bullies, their paper tigers. They're, they're really working, if it's people, usually out of a fear themselves. And it's only afterwards you realize how small they really are. Or some event that all we had to realize is the power that was behind us if we hadn't given in to the fear, if we hadn't been afraid or dismayed, if we hadn't disallowed God from giving us the promise He was trying to give us, but we refused to accept it. A, B. What's the C? The C is obey. The C is obey. In the Hebrew, the word was shamar, meaning to guard, to protect, to attend, to be circumspect, to keep, to look narrowly, to preserve, <coughs> to observe, to regard, to be sure. And this is where it all hinges. This is what the whole thing hinges on. And I'll tell you why. As we go along in this story, and I speak a little in the vernacular here in terms we tend to use, there are times when the Hebrew people go along and their enemy just melts before them. And they take the land just, they shouldn't have these little guys in front of these giants, but they just take the land. They take the territory. And then there are certain times that, quite frankly, they get their butts kicked. They get hammered. They go in to, to do something and they get hammered. What made the difference? Ever been there yourself? You say, well, God's with me, and then you go in and you get hammered. You say, maybe God's not with me, or God's not there, or something. Well, here's the thing. When you back up and kind of take this through steps. When God told them they would take possession of the land, Joshua 3.10 kind of lays out very, very directly how he was doing it. And Joshua said, and Joshua, God speaking through Joshua, and Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, that he will without fail, he will without fail drive out from you the Canaanites and the such. He will drive out. The people had to step forward. The people had to do what they had to do. They had to cross the river. God would part the water, but they had to cross. God would drive out the enemy, but they had to get up to the walls. These things had to be done. God would do the driving out. In effect, for these people, how they won the land was they had a secret weapon. They had a secret power, and that power was God. Well, if you have a secret weapon or a secret power, and that is what's going to see you through the battles you have to face. By golly, you better hold real tight to that power. You better uh, use it exactly the way it's supposed to be used. It, it better work that way or it's not going to work at all. If you get loose and, and kind of off-connected from the power that's your secret weapon, there can only be one consequence. You're going to get hammered. You're going to lose that battle. You don't have your power. You don't have your shield. You don't have your strength. So many times, even to our day, just like those Hebrew people, people say, well, uh, see, God doesn't do anything. God's not there. God doesn't work. Uh, and where was he in this? Were you connected to the power? Were you doing what you were supposed to do? Uh, you know, and, and you're talking and uh, the marriage is, is, is hell that I'm living in. I'm trying to be God. Well, did you go into the marriage the way the power told you to go in? Are you living by those principles as you're in it? Well, if it's not working, it maybe you're, it's not God. It's maybe it's the connection that, that's going on. That's exactly what happened. We can look ahead into some of these battles. Once again, here I am breaking the rules. because In following the story, we're not supposed to go into the future. But we can look at some of these battles that they fought. And, and, and the dynamic is like this. They go, they, God drives the enemy up, and you know, guess who gets cocky? You know, oh, look at what we did. 
And then they come up to a point and they start reasoning, and God says to them in certain cases, don't go fight this battle. Don't touch these people. Don't do it at this time. And they reason in themselves, ah, we'll take that with a grain of salt and we'll just handle it. We beat everybody so far. And they go into a battle where God told them not to go. Or in a way, he told them, don't go about it that way. And then they get a, a real heavy dose of reality on who's really the power. The idea is, it all hinges on this one, obey, is to obey, is to be in sync with the power. And if we follow those, the consequence is natural. If we're following the ABCs, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We might even reword that a bit, is that we are with God wherever He goes. He is there. Three things. It really comes down to three things when we have to face our giants. Be of good courage. Don't be afraid. And obey. Courage, not discouraged, obey. And it all is, it sounds so simplistic, doesn't it? Oh yeah, sure, that sounds so simplistic. But the truth is, this goes to all kinds of levels. And as we go through all the stuff in life that we go through, it, we execute these things in all kinds of forms. And it's it's uh, not just some naive statement. It is, in fact, a profound skill to develop and live it. Not always that easy. Courage.